Today's question comes from Cajun Cowboy, and he asked a question that I have a lot to say about, and I am dying to see what all you think in the comments down below. How often do you or should you shut down or restart your system? Lots of conflicting recommendations on this one. Welcome to the internet. Mine currently go to sleep after 20 minutes and I rarely fully shut down. Restarts are done when Windows Update requires them. Today's video is brought to you by eWin Racing, the best source for gaming chairs and desks for those long gaming sessions. We have a playlist of our eWin chair and desk videos linked in the video description below. Save 30% off of everything using the discount code TECHDEALS. More details at the end of the video. Well, I'm a creature of habit, as are many people. I have been doing this for a very long time since the DOS days when there was no such thing as sleep. Sheep. We had sheep back then. So in the DOS days, you turn your computer on your DOS prompt. You're done with it, you just turn the computer off. The, the concept of sleep didn't exist. Of course, the concept of having to like exit your operating system didn't exist either. For those of you who don't remember DOS or are too young to have been involved with DOS, yeah, computers didn't always used to work like this. Let me start off by saying what I do currently. Then I'll get into some recommendations and some thoughts, and then I will share with you some thoughts about the good old days, which weren't always so good. First, my main machines, my personal gaming PC at home and my main video editing PC here at the office always stay on. I never turn them off. I use them often enough. I want them responsive all the time. I just, I just leave them on. Modern power saving, and I don't mean sleep, but modern power saving, the screens go blank, the CPUs just naturally crank down and the consumption of the CPU and GPU is so low. It's not that big of a deal. They, they're on 24 seven. I restart them when Windows updates require them or whenever they're being fussy which given the sheer number of programs we run and the number of things in the task tray, and especially with how Adobe Premiere Pro can be, we restart them probably more often than the average person. We don't use sleep mode. Um, that partly comes back to being old and remembering Windows 95 and Windows 98 sleep mode were garbage. And I'm sure it's much better now. In fact, I know it is. This laptop right here sleeps very nicely. I've had some other machines sleep. They resume very, very quickly. It's better than it used to be. But in the bad old days of the old Windows, basically what would happen is you put your computer to sleep. And this happened across so many machines I developed this habit. You put your computer to sleep and it wouldn't wake up. You'd push the keyboard. You'd push the mouse. You'd even push the power button in front of the computer. Nothing. Computer's still on. Light's still on. Nobody's home. You have to force power off the machine or keep in mind, this was in the, some days before we had the soft power switches, the old AT stuff where you'd have to physically kill the hard power switch or on some machines just unplug the computer, although with the hard switch that really isn't an issue. But then you have to deal with data corruption. Anybody remember FAT32 and how many times you had to run ScanDisk? Yeah. So I long, long, long ago got in the habit of disabling sleep on everything. It's just a thing I do. It's probably not necessary anymore, but it's a thing I do. So I do shut down most of our other machines. I shut down the video capture PC. I shut down our test benches. I don't shut down our front desk machine here at the office because it's a Ryzen 7 5700G. Shout out to that absolutely amazing CPU. There's no GPU in there. It consumes almost no power. And it just sits there, and that way, whenever I walk by it and need to use it, it's instantly available at my beck and call, because that's kind of the purpose of a computer. It should be available at your beck and call. But obviously, this doesn't stay on and, and so on. Restarts. Um, I mentioned what I do for restarts. I You used to have to restart your computer all the time. Uh, heck, going back to, I know I'm doing this out of order, but going back to the battle days, how many of you remember having to reinstall Windows every six months to a year? Yeah, that used to be a thing. These days, I reinstall Windows when I replace the computer. I My last machine, my i9-9900K at home, it got a fresh install of Windows when I built it, and it lost that install when I tore the machine down. Never got a reinstall. My current machine probably will do the same thing. My video editing PC, which you can't see, it's sitting over there, Ryzen, 7, Ryzen 9 5950X, that has its original install on it. 
that's about to be replaced by a new machine, 13900K, and so it will lose that install when that gets taken down as well. But man, having to reinstall Windows every six months, maybe a year, but it was a pretty frequent thing back then. Restarts? Are you kidding? You used to have to restart your machine every day. In fact, I remember in the late 90s, in the Windows 95 and Windows 98 days, when we would go into companies to support them, one of the things we'd do, because it would save so much trouble, is at the end of the day, not all companies shut their machines down. Now, if you shut your machine down, not put it into sleep, but if you shut your machine down, well, this solves the problem. But companies that don't shut their machines down, just reboot them at the end of every day. Just all of them. Everybody would have a little sticker on their monitor that's like, remember to reboot your machine before you go home. So everybody's computer had a fresh reboot when they came in in the morning. That solved more problems back then than you'd think. And to those of you who are younger who hear this today, you'd be like, you're telling me an office of 35 employees were all told that every day before they went home, reboot every one of your machines. Yes. That's ridiculous. Welcome to computing in the 90s. It was a different time. So, and, and it's not that they all required it. It's that computers, especially from non-technical users, Windows 95, Windows 98 computers, left to sit for several weeks. They do dumb things. They click stupid things. They, they just mess with them. Yes, I know system policies should exist, but those weren't real operating systems. It's a different time. So the thing is, from a having to support them point of view, getting people in the habit of restarting their computer cut down on the number of times they called me. It's a reduction of workload. So it's, it's an interesting question. It's, you know, here's the funny thing. My phone gets restarted, what? When it gets an update, I guess a security update. Otherwise, I never think about it because modern phones are relatively locked down and secure. Of course, you can't install your own programs there. With your Windows PC, you can. I'm dying to see what you guys think down in the comment section below. I realized it was a very rambly kind of all over the place response. I shared what I did. I shared some of the past. It doesn't matter. I don't think it matters. I think everybody can do something different depending upon their circumstance. I don't think you need to randomly restart your machine anymore. My own machine probably gets rebooted twice a month these days. It certainly gets rebooted once a month when they do the Windows patches. I mean, you have to restart occasionally for those things. But I don't restart regularly. I don't shut down fully except unless it's a task machine like our video capture PC or my laptop here for filming. I'm still in a fan of sleep mode. The monitors go to sleep. I do set the monitors to blank out because once they go to sleep mode, the monitors are obviously very efficient. The computer's not that big a deal. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I wish I had some like brilliant recommendation to make to everybody, but in this case, do what you want. Ewin Racing has a wide selection of chairs to fit all shapes and sizes of gamers, ranging from petite to cuddly, they have something for every type of gamer. Not just sizes, but colors and material options as well, including red, blue, purple, pink, orange, and more, plus cloth and leather choices. We have over half a dozen chair and desk videos in a playlist down in the video description below. We also have a very special offer just for Tech Deals viewers. Save 30% off of everything using discount code tech deals using our link in the video description. We have used Ewin gaming chairs for three years in our office, sitting on them for up to eight hour marathon live streams. They are very comfortable and we are happy to work with Ewin to bring you this special discount and recommend Ewin for all of your gaming chair and desk needs.